All right, so for today, we're diving into another restorative yin class. So before we get going, hit pause and just grab a few things from around your house. It's okay if you don't have the specific yoga props, but potentially just getting um, a couple of pillows or a bolster if you have one, or maybe it's just a thick towel or blanket that you can roll up just to support yourself with. So grab whatever you can find, just kind of have them close by and then come back. All right, so finding yourself in simple seated. We're gonna just start with eagle arms here. So opening up the arms like a T. Let's bring the right elbow on top of the left. And you can either bring the palms together or if that's too intense on your shoulders today, just take opposite hand, opposite shoulder. And you don't have to work too hard. Typically we wanna really reach the elbows in line with the shoulders and create some space. But since we're gonna hold this for a few moments, we don't want to be really intensely in the pose. So just kind of find where you can feel sensation in this position and just start to breathe. Breathing into the tight spaces in the back body between the shoulders, maybe even the neck a little bit. And the question I bring to us today is, how do we thrive here in the middle of the chaos of modern society? With everything coming at you every day, Needs of children, emails, phone notifications, work meetings, friend meetups. We live with such a constant buzz. So how do we be here, be present, but not feel like we're also caught up in all the chaos? And so Jesus invites us to walk with him, to learn from him, and see how he lives freely and lightly. He talks about that, a real rest in Matthew. And he models how we too can live freely and lightly. So just find a full breath in here. Gentle exhale out. Just breathing in this idea of freely and lightly. And one of the invitations for us to learn from him is to practice silence and solitude. All over the New Testament, Jesus is getting away to go be quiet, to go be still, to get away from all the noise. So he says, if you want to learn how to live freely and lightly, then learn to engage in silence and solitude. Let's release that bind here. Maybe roll the shoulders a little bit. Maybe moving the neck around before we take the other side. So when you feel ready, just open the arms out like a T again, this time crossing your left elbow on top of your right, taking either variation that works for you today. As you just sit with your breath, your slow, deep belly breathing, and let's just be in silence as we hold this posture. We might not be able to control some external noise depending on where you're practicing today. Hopefully you have some quiet around you, but that's not always the case. But can we begin to let our breath calm our inner world? Relaxing your jaw. 
Noticing where you feel this pose in your body and just breathing there. Perhaps you observe any mental chatter that's going on. We don't just come into a practice and immediately find inner quiet. We might not even find it throughout this whole class, and that's okay. We're, we're practicing the discipline. So just observe any mental noise and notice where it's taking you, what it's saying. And then just return to your big belly breath. That freely and lightly invitation to live. Notice how silence feels to you. It can often feel uncomfortable if we're not used to this kind of thing. But can you embrace it today? Can you embrace it in our class and just start to learn the gift that's found in silence? So release that bind again. Just rolling the shoulders, releasing your neck however you need. And then just making your way into table, just finding little breaks to find some flow and movement before we then sit into another posture. So move however you feel. And then curl the toes, lift the knees, just take a down dog Again, make it your own, whether you need to just sway your hips here or pedal out your knees. We're not looking for the perfect down dog, just letting this pose release the spine and the neck. And then coming back down into table. Just take a super slow cat-cow, so really slow and intentional inhale as you drop the belly and lift the gaze. Maybe just finding that pause at the top of the breath before you round into cat pose, leading with the tailbone dropping towards the heels and then rounding the spine. So finding that pause at the bottom of your exhale and the top of your inhale, just taking it a little slower than normal. Our breath helps us to create that inner quiet. Maybe there's a lot of noise, so we need a lot of time to move it through with our breath. But we show up here. This is your place with no judgment. It's a place to observe and connect, to plug back in to source of life. And then when you're ready, let's just take another down dog, feet wide this time. Maybe a deep bend in the right knee. And then the left. Just going back and forth. And then bring your feet back together, lifting your right leg up. Let's shift forward into lying pigeon. So bring that right knee to the right wrist. And then just bringing your left heel in towards your groin. Depending on your hip flexibility, maybe you work the shin parallel to the front of your mat. Bring the fingertips to either side, square off your hips. If you feel like you're rolling over onto a side, maybe use your pillow or blanket or whatever prop you have to kind of Rest it under that hip that's trying to lift so you can stabilize there. And then as you're ready, maybe you just come lie into it. 
maybe you start on your forearms and then maybe a little bit longer while you're here, you can sink in a little further. But see if you can avoid some of the fidgeting. So once you find yourself in a position that you can be in and breathe into, can you find stillness in your body? So Matthew talks about Jesus um, being led by the spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. So after 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, when Jesus was hungry and tired, this is when the tempter came. And I found this fascinating that, that the Greek word for desert is eremos, which has many meanings. So it can mean desert or deserted place a desolate place, a solitary place, quiet place, or wilderness. And I love the idea of it being called a quiet place. And still kind of with this intention from the ruthless elimination of hurry, John Comer says, why did Jesus have to go off into the wilderness? Why alone? And why after 40 days of fasting when he's hungry he says, for years, the story made no sense to me because I thought of the wilderness as a place of weakness. I read it this way. Isn't that so like the devil to come after us when we're hangry and at our worst? After a long day or week. But then I realized that I had it backwards. The wilderness or the quiet place isn't a place of weakness. It's the place of strength. So just sit with that, this idea that going off into the desert, into the quiet, solitary place, was the place of strength. It was after these 40 days there that Jesus had the capacity to take on what was coming for him and come out unscathed. Like he needed this 40 days there to be totally silent and alone. Just find a few more breaths here in silence. Maybe just tuning in to the quiet sound of your breath moving in and out your nose. you're ready just slowly start to come up make yourself back into a down dog and just gently shake out that right leg and then taking the left leg lifting it up bringing the left knee towards your left wrist making your way into pigeon on this side, using whatever props you might need. Even if you wanna just use that pillow or bolster to rest your upper body on and lay on it. Let this be supportive and restorative. Once you find yourself in your lying pigeon, come into that stillness. Stillness in the body. Working towards stillness in the mind. Just keep relaxing your jaw and your shoulders. Holding our posture but staying connected to your belly breathing. That this right here on your mat, the space of quiet and silence, is your place of strength.
as you take the last few breaths in this pose, see if there's any more place that you can rest in your body, that you can relax and soften in. And as you're ready, just come slowly back up. Moving slowly into that down dog just to move around the leg, the left leg. And then taking your time, just coming to your knees and table, crossing at your ankles behind you, and then just sitting back. Bringing the soles of your feet together. Let's just find butterfly here. So maybe, again, if you have a bunch of pillows, you can either stack them and maybe just hinge forward and lean on those. Or maybe just sitting upright, hinging slightly forward is deep enough for you today. So just tune into your body. And then start to find stillness. So there's another story in the Gospels where the disciples are dead tired after all the work that they've been doing alongside Jesus that they didn't even have a chance to eat. And so Jesus invites them to come to get away and be by themselves, to go off to the quiet place to get rest. And maybe today that would sound like the invitation of, oh, what you really need isn't a beer or a night out at the movies. What you really need is time alone with me. But to do that, we need to get away from all the noise and all the people. So sometimes we think just to take the edge off when it's been just so overwhelming, we just want to distract ourselves. And again, that's not bad to want to enjoy some of those things. But I think bringing into our lives this this rhythm of silence and solitude, of getting away before going to some of the other things, to, to really come to crave it, to realize that it is our place of strength when it's been, when things have been hectic, Checking in to see, have we been silent? Have we gotten alone? Just to be in the presence of God. And then from there, being able to go out. Maybe enjoy some of those other things. But prioritizing solitude is your place of strengthening. Of refreshing of like that true soul rest. Start to come up out of your butterfly if you've hinged into it. Just sitting up. We're going to just take half hero. So take the right leg and just bend the knee, bringing the heel right next to your thigh. So pressing into the top of that right foot, keeping that foot slightly flexed. Just come to slowly lie down here and bend your left knee. And then you can just walk the left foot out towards the left at the left side of your mat and maybe just let that knee kind of fall to the side slightly and then extend your right arm up. Your left arm can just be out at the side and just notice the sensations in this pose. If it's not working in your knee, if anything feels painful, I want you to just come out of this and maybe just take your knees together and let your feet be wide. So none of our poses should ever cause pain. They might cause discomfort and something we might need to breathe into to learn to sit in, but pain is not something we should be feeling. So please honor your body. So 
so I know we can easily avoid the very thing we need, which is this quiet place. We can let ourselves stay distracted because we might not want to actually sit with the answers to our questions. Even though we're exhausted, we'd rather keep moving at a certain pace because to really, to really get quiet, maybe we're afraid of what would be revealed. And so we just stay distracted, keep moving, keep disconnecting from our soul and from spirit. But I just want to keep coming back to this idea that Eremos, the, the quiet place that Jesus kept going off to was the place of strength. It's not a place we need to fear. It's a place of soul knowing, of rest, of clarity. slowly kind of prop yourself up onto your forearms and just come up letting that maybe shifting over to the left side so you can bring the right leg out in front of you if there's anything you need to do in between sides take that now and then as you're ready you can just bend the left knee bring that the left sole of your foot right next to the left thigh having that little micro flex in the foot so we don't tweak anything and then slowly lying down bending the right knee bringing the right foot out to the right side of the mat just exploring sensations maybe you are um, flexing that right foot and just slowly opening the right knee and then extend that left arm overhead let it rest on the ground beneath uh, above your head right arm just out to the side and find your breath in the sensations here noticing maybe the mental chatter is getting quieter I know every time that I intentionally make room for the quiet place, I do feel that strength. I come out with insight. I feel connected and lighter and secure. Even the other day, I hung up the phone and I just started to feel really emotional. I knew my mind was creating stories and scenarios that were most likely not true, but they were affecting my emotions. And it would have just been easier, right, to just hang up the phone and find something else to distract myself with and keep going and stuff it down and write it off, but I gave it room. I took pause from work and I, I just laid in the hallway with my legs up the wall and I took my own little quiet time, quiet place here. And I just cried. I just let myself cry. I let myself play things out and then just got quiet. And in the stillness, I was able to see that my mind was just trying to fill in the gaps from things that were unknown. I was reminded that I was just making scenarios, but that they weren't facts. And I just started to find comfort in that truth. And so when was the last time that you went into your own quiet place? 
Just reflect on how that was for you. How you left that time. And maybe if it's been a while, you think about what it is you need to get quiet about. Is there something that just feels exhausting? Just slowly come back up when you're ready. Letting both legs come out long in front of you. And then just coming onto your back, maybe hugging knees to chest for a few breaths, just rocking gently side to side. And then our final posture, let's just take happy baby. So reaching for the soles of your feet with your hands on the inside edge. Letting the knees drop down towards the ground as you just put a little pressure on your heels and the sole of your foot. And maybe if you want to have some little movement here, maybe it's just a really slow, steady rock side to side. Just like a really soothing rock that calms the mind and the body. Relaxing the jaw, letting the shoulders be soft. So Jesus came out of the wilderness with all sorts of clarity about his identity and calling. He came out grounded and centered. And I know for myself, I need a whole lot of that. And I need it more than just every now and then. I need that daily. I need that multiple times a day. So silence and solitude doesn't have to happen for hours on end. But can we make spaces in our days for just a moment here or there just to pause Even if you have to go hide in a closet to find some solitude just for a moment. Just letting your legs go out long in Shavasana when you're ready. If you need to take any movement beforehand, just do that. And then in your Shavasana, letting your arms be out wide, your legs spread out wide. Inhale, lifting the heart, draw the shoulder blades together. Exhale, lower down. Full breath in. Audible exhale. Just be in the silence without needing to figure it out. Just simply rest here. When we live into a practice of silence and solitude, we come to a place of freedom. 
Our failures slowly lose their power over us, as do our successes. We get out from under the tyranny of other people's opinions, their disapproval or their approval of us, and we're free to just be us, the mixed bag that we are. Nothing more than children with our Father, adopted into love and free to be in process, yet to arrive, and that's okay. In silence and solitude, our souls finally come home. And that's what Jesus meant by abide, the verb of abode or home. It's the place of rest. We come back to our places of soul rest. It's just moving your fingers and your toes. Moving your neck side to side slowly, just slowly emerging from our place of silence, stillness, just rolling onto your side in a fetal position. And as you're ready, just coming up to seated, palms open on your knees. Sitting up nice and tall, full breath in. Sigh it out. So from chaos to soul rest, lead us. From darkness to light, lead us. From death to full life, lead us. So I know that none of this is a revolutionary idea or brand new info, but it actually works and it's something we really avoid. And so my encouragement for you is to take time maybe right now after this class, if you can, to just stay in the quiet just a few minutes more. Maybe you journal any thoughts that came to you or things that you are processing And then just practice making space for that Eremos, for your quiet place every day. Maybe it's just five minutes. Let it just be that small chocolate morsel you savor in your day. Just those, that, that quick pause. And then maybe with time it grows, but even if it just is five minutes, I just encourage you to take that for yourself. All right, see you next time.